and welcome back to Two Day Pass. My name is Scott. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. And today we're at Chertsey Test Centre. This is the first time I've ever been here. I've had a little look at it online, but I've never actually experienced it first time. We're going to show you a test route and everything that you need to know in order to pass your driving test at Chertsey first time. But in general, you'll have lots of driving tips along the way. Okay, so we're at the test center. We're gonna to start to get moving now. As you can see, driving hands-free today. So I'll have the cue from my colleague here to tell me where we're, we're going. Turn right. Turning right. End of the road, turn right. And end of the road, turn right. So as you can see, it's quite a narrow space here bit hard to see around the park vehicle so whenever you're starting your driving test or finishing your driving test take your time so here we're going to be turning right again so this is quite a difficult area to see again and it's leading into a very narrow road so what you want to do at this junction is lean forwards get the best possible view of the road you're joining especially on the right hand side because we're coming out and over onto our side of the road, which is nice for priority, but if there is an oncoming vehicle, there won't be enough room for both of you. So somebody's gonna have to take responsibility, you, and stop early to give priority to the traffic on the main road. Pull up on the left. All right, I've been told to pull up on the left. Mirror, mirror, so interior mirror, left mirror check, and you pull up and you stop on the left. Now your examiner will give you quite a bit of room, as you can see here, we've stopped quite close to the parked car. You wouldn't be doing this on your driving test. You'd at least have a car length. Now we're gonna move off again. So make sure you do your all round observations, checking from least dangerous side, being the left hand side, pavement side, and then working your way to the most dangerous side uh, last and then moving off so you know there's no overtaking traffic. And this is a very narrow road. I'm going to take the second exit. All right, we're turning second exit on the roundabout. Now, I don't know if that's left or right because my examiner hasn't told me, but as I can see now, two exits, one on the left, one on the right. We're turning right, second exit towards Staines. So you might be asked to actually follow signs on your driving test for your independent drive. Next roundabout here, what's happening here? No, it's just to follow the road. Looks like we're coming into a next, traffic next line. Roundabout, turn right. Okay, then there'll be a roundabout further down the road. And at this roundabout, we're going to be turning right. So again, my examiner <laughs> hasn't told me what exit, like what number exit, just right. Now that does happen on your driving test. So now look at the lane here. We're gonna use the right lane normally to turn right. So yes, we're positioning into the right-hand lane. Check the traffic to the right. There's absolutely no one there. So we've proceeded to join the junction. Now, if you want to count the exit for the sales shop there, the car were going straight, um, then it would be third exit turning right, but we wouldn't normally count that exit, would we? It'd just be second exit turning right. That's because it's a private road into a private shop. So it's not a main road, not regarded as a main exit. So we have to use this lane to go straight. So if you rewind the video, you'll see there was two lanes at this traffic light. We're following the road ahead. If you don't get any uh, directions from your examiner, you will be following the road ahead. Normally they'll tell you that at the beginning of the test, follow the road ahead unless I tell you to turn left or right or road markings state otherwise. So you just need to follow the road, look at the road markings, see the straight arrow so you know what lane you need to use early on and then you'll have a more relaxed, comfortable drive. And that's what the examiners are looking for. So we're still following the road ahead here. Mini roundabout straight ahead. And then we've got a mini roundabout straight ahead. So again, you might not get directions. You might just be in silence. And a lot of the time when people have this silence on the test, it builds the anxiety levels, but it's just normal. The examiner's doing it to help you focus and see what's going on and not distract you in any way. Look to the right here, both vehicles on the right have gone straight ahead. It's very important to look at the wheels of the vehicles. Nice little mirror checks from my colleague there when he signaled left. Once he'd passed the first exit, showing everyone he's gonna take the second exit. So really good mirrors and signals there. There was only one lane, so you don't need to worry about what lane you're gonna use for that roundabout. Sure. Same again, so we've got another mini, about, uh, mini roundabout straight ahead. 
checking the traffic on the right, look at the wheels, look at the signals of the vehicles. As you could see, the, uh, the vehicle on the right had the right signal on, so we could. that's a good clue. We know the vehicle's intentions. But then you look at the wheels afterwards. So again, if you want to rewind the video, go back to that. Look at when the wheels start to turn on the vehicle. That's your guarantee. You know the vehicle's definitely turning at that point. So sometimes people might accidentally signal, but if you're looking for the signals and the wheels, you're gonna have a much more certain answer to where is that vehicle gonna go. Um, so here we are on a narrow road now, uh, parked vehicles on both sides of the road. This is going to push us out potentially over the center line. Uh, nice mirror checks there. Yeah, so we're checking the right hand side, center, right hand side mirrors. We're over the center line. The center line's down the middle of the vehicle, down the middle of the steering wheel. That's a good indication that you're keeping a good safe Check distance one. from the parked cars. Following the signs of Way Bridge and that's turning right at the traffic lights. Now there is two lanes for turning right here. Normally if we use the very right lane, that means we'll be turning right again afterwards. My colleague's checked his left hand side here over his blind spot to see the potential traffic in that left lane. We've done a very good job here at maintaining this lane and this has actually gained us progress. So this is another good reason for using the right lane for overtaking. Now my colleague looks like he's gonna be turning right. Now you can see, there's a roundabout coming up here. Perfect. Excellent, third exit, so we actually got a number that time. Uh, following the sign towards Woking, okay? Third, oh no, Woking was the fourth exit, I apologize. I'm not quite sure what the third exit, so rewind, put that down in the comments what the third exit said, I didn't see that. Um, but anyways, we're turning right, third exit, we're in the correct lane. We've done our mirrors and signals roughly about 10 to five car lengths from the junction. We're now checking the right hand side. It's nice and clear, no traffic. Joining the right hand lane. We've passed the first exit. We've passed the second exit. This is where we're gonna mirror and signal to the left. And I thought that there was the third exit, but anyways, there we are, fourth exit, Woking. So we accidentally went the Woking way. So we've done the fourth exit. Correct, okay, so yes, I was correct in saying Woking. It was the fourth exit, so exactly what we did was correct. However, I kind of thought we were gonna take the third exit. Doesn't matter. On your driving test, as long as you go the way that you're going safely, then you will not fail your driving test. Very important, it's all about road safety. Now we're on a dual carriageway and the speed limit is 50 miles an hour. So make sure that you've been looking out for signs. The whole time you're on your driving test, keep looking for signs. Now we've got the countdown markers here Second. for our roundabout. Second. We're at the 300 mark now. We're going straight towards Woking again. I must have summoned Woking. I was thinking a lot about Woking on the way up here. Now we're using the correct lane. We're going straight. There's no road markings to tell us this is a left only. So we use the left lane to go straight at roundabouts if that's the case. Looking to the right, it's nice and clear. No traffic on the right. This area seems to be quite a quiet area, although the roundabouts, you know, a little bit big, dual carriageway, 50 mile an hour speed limit. The controlled roundabouts, they don't seem to be too busy. So it shouldn't be a, a too tricky of an, a sort of junction to join into. Some other test centers, very, very busy roundabouts, and it builds that anxiety level when you're waiting to join onto the roundabout. So it seems like a nice area to do the test. This is the exit, we've done our mirrors and signals. We're watching the right hand side here because that might merge into us. We're checking that side and starting to merge over if it's safe to defend that area. Now we've done a lane change onto our left hand side here. I believe this is the most trickiest route at um, Chertsey Driving Test Center. I'm not getting anything from the stick over here, literally, he's just like <laughs> blanking me right now. Um, so it seems to be in a reasonably decent area, and I think this is the hardest test route, from my knowledge at least. Now look at what's coming up. <laughs> We've got another big roundabout coming further down the road. We're going to be turning second exit, turning right towards Chertsey. 
So, um, Chertsey there, Staines, I believe you'll probably be asked to follow the signs of Chertsey. Mirror, mirror, signal right, 10 to 5 car lengths. Start to brake, hold that brake pedal. You can see the car in front's braking. Make sure you pay attention to this traffic light if it is on. If not, just watch the right hand side. Past the first exit, still using the right lane. Now we're going to start to mirror, mirror, signal left. And now we're going to move over into the left hand lane if it's safe to do so. I believe at the next roundabout we're going to be going straight. So you can use the right lane to go straight. So if you can't make your way into the left lane, stay on to the right lane. You've got a straight arrow in the right lane. You can use that lane. Check the traffic. Maintain your lane discipline. So we've kept the left hand side. Second exit towards Chertsey again. So this would be an independent drive following the signs to Chertsey or if you're on your test you've got an 80% chance of having the sat nav on. So the sat nav will tell you where to go. This is a lot easier as so you can take a glance down and a glance means a second look at the sat nav. Then you can actually see the path, the blue line on the sat nav and this is going to show you where you're going. When you're looking and relying on signs sometimes you feel like you've missed a sign but in fact the signs are mile down the road. This can build anxiety levels. So if you have the sat that nav, do plenty of practice with your instructor. Double roundabouts here, Chertsey straight on, so we're following the signs of Chertsey. Um, this whole road, by the way, have you been paying attention to the speed signs? So although it looks like a normal sort of average road, we've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit on this road. Obviously, if it's clear and it's safe, good dry conditions, good visibility, you must build your speed up to the speed limit. A lot of people do fail the driving test for driving too slowly in 40 and 50 mile an hour roads. Okay, looking to the traffic on the right, there's a blocker car which has blocked the traffic on the right from going, so we've proceeded. Now we're keeping the left lane to go straight again, but look here at the right. It's quite a difficult situation to see on the cameras that we're using for today's mock te or sorry, test route video, but usually I'd have a 360 camera where I'd be able to show you that traffic to the side. If you're interested in seeing some of those videos, look on the channel for the mock test to see exactly what I'm talking about. Then you can use your judgment to assess whether it was safe to go. Now, when you have double roundabouts like that, the second roundabout comes up so quickly, a lot of people don't do their observations and don't see the second roundabout. Therefore, they'll fail the driving test for observations. This has been the number one reason for people failing their driving test for like 10 years in a row. So make sure you do plenty of practice, show you examine your safe driver. Here we have a new speed change. So see the big sign here these are the big circles they're on opposite sides of each other spanning the whole width of the road that implicates a change in speed we're approaching a, a roundabout here we're going to be turning right a lot of right turns on roundabouts hence saying it's the most difficult route we've got our mirrors signals in the right lane so it's mirrors signals first position third speed and then look so if you guys have um, done any driving, nice mirror signal there on the exit, well done Stiggy. And yeah, if you've done any driving lessons whatsoever, your instructor should have gone through this routine with you. So for all junctions, mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. And this is the routine for junctions. Very important you focus on that routine as it will really help you out. So we're in a residential area, you'll be brought into an area like this to do a maneuver usually. You want to do this area nice and slow and gentle, listening to your examiner, which just said, so going back to the test center. Wow, okay, so here we are on the very narrow road that we started on, and make sure that you take care of anyone that's coming out of these side roads, out of these residential parts, and out of the industrial area here that we have for the test center. Nice and wide on the entry here, that's nice, giving you plenty of room, but then look at this, we've turned into a, a narrow point now with the rubbish truck here on the right. So although you get a lot of room, always prepare for parked cars when you enter into, an, into a new road, that way you might have to slow down, you're prepared to stop. It's all going to be nice and controlled. Nice and slow here, plenty of mirror checks, turning left into the test center where you may be asked to do a reverse bay park. So I'd like you to go towards the bins for me, face the bins, and then reverse into any bay that you choose, Mr. Stiggy. 
So Stiggy's chose the far right bay over here. We've got a nice um, camera here that I might be able to just quickly show you. So we can use the camera just like this to do our reverse bay parking. Nice and easy. You know when you're in the bay, you can see the white lines. And then all you need to do is just adjust your steering so that you can see the big thick yellow lines stay in between the white lines until that red line comes back towards the very rear part of the bay. You can stop a bit early, you don't need to get too close. And that's you, job done. Bob's your uncle. Leave a like on the video if you've got this far. And I've been Scott, this is Two Day Pass. Stay safe, stay tuned, because another mock test route is coming your way. See you next time.